All right, welcome to Starting the Scripture, uh, reading of the Bible with Keturah. Uh, today we're reading day 50, uh, Exodus 37 and 38, Leviticus 26, and Psalm 82. Actually, after today, we only have one more day in Exodus and Leviticus, so we are coming to the end of both Exodus and Leviticus, um, and after that, we will be actually finished um, with this section So, of the Bible. So again, today we are reading from Exodus 37, building of the Ark of the Covenant. Next, Bezalel made the Ark of Acacia wood, a sacred chest, 45 inches long, 27 inches wide, and 27 inches high. He overlaid it inside and outside with pure gold, and he ran a molding of gold all around it. He cast four gold rings and attached them to its four feet, two rings on each side. Then he made poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He inserted the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to carry it. Then he made the ark's cover, the place of atonement from pure gold. It was 45 inches long and 27 inches wide. He made two cherubim from hammered gold and placed them on the two ends of the atonement cover. He molded the cherubim on each end of the atonement cover, making it all one piece of gold. The cherubim faced each other and looked down on the atonement cover. With their wings spread above it, they protected it. Building the table. Then Bezalel made the table of acacia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. He overlaid it with pure gold and ran a gold molding around the edge. He decorated it with a three-inch border all around, and he ran a gold molding along the border. Then he cast four gold rings for the table and attached them at the four corners next to the four legs. The rings were attached near the border to hold poles that were used to carry the table. He made these poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he made special containers of pure gold for the table, bowls, pans, jars, and pitchers to be used in pouring out liquid offerings. Building the lampstand. Then Bezalel made the lampstand of pure hammered gold. He made the entire lampstand and its decorated de decorations of one piece, the base, center stem, lamp cups, buds, and petals. The lampstand had six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. Each of the six branches had three cups lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. The center stem of the lampstand was crafted with four lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. There was an almond bud beneath each pair of branches where the six branches extended from the center stem, all made of one piece. The almond buds and branches were all of one piece of the center stem, and they were hammered from pure gold. He also made seven lamps of the seven of, for the lampstands, lamp snuffers, and trays, all of pure gold. The entire lampstand, along with its accessories, was made from 75 pounds of pure gold. Building the incense altar. Then Bezalel made the incense altar of acacia wood. It was 18 inches square and 36 inches high, with horns at the corners carved from the same piece of wood as the altar itself. He overlaid the top, sides, and horns of the altar with pure gold, and he ran a gold molding around the entire altar. He made two gold rings and attached them on opposite sides of the altar, below the gold molding, to hold the carrying poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he made the sacred anointing oil and the fragrant incense using the techniques of a skilled incense maker. Leviticus, or I'm sorry, Exodus 38, building the altar of burnt offering. Next, Bezalel used acacia wood to construct the square altar of burnt offering. It was seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet long, and four and a half feet high. He made horns for each of its four corners so that the horns and the altar were all one piece. He overlaid the altar with browns. Then he made all the altar utensils of browns, the ash buckets, shovels, basins, meat, forks, and fire pans. Next, he made a bronze grating and installed it halfway down the side of the altar. And under the ledge, he cast four rings and attached them to the corners of the bronze grating to hold the carrying poles. He made the poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He inserted the poles to the rings on the sides of the altar. The altar was hollow and was made from planks. Building the wash basin. Bezalel made the wa bronze wash basin and its bronze stand from bronze mirrors donated by the women who served at the entrance of the tabernacle. Building of the, the courtyard. Then Bezalel made the courtyard which was enclosed with curtains made of finely woven linen. On the south side, the curtains were 150 feet long. They were held up by 20 posts set securely in 20 bronze bases. He hung the curtains with silver hooks and rings. He made a similar set of curtains for the north side. 150 feet of curtains held up by 20 posts set securely in bronze bases. He hung the curtains 
with silver hooks and rings. The curtains on the west side of the courtyard were 75 feet long, hung with silver hooks and rings and supported by 10 posts set into 10 bases. The east end, the front, was also 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance was on the east end, flanked by two curtains. The curtain on the right side was 22 and a half feet long and was supported by three posts set into three bases. The curtain on the left side was also 22 and a half feet long and was supported by three posts set into three basins. All the curtains used in the courtyard were made of finely woven linen. Each post had a bronze base and all the hooks and rings were silver. The top of the posts of the courtyard were overlaid with silver and the rings to hold up the curtain were made of silver. He made the curtain for the entrance of the courtyard of finely woven linen and he decorated it with beautiful embroidery in blue, purple, and scarlet thread. It was 30 feet long, and its height was seven and a half feet, just like the curtains of the courtyard walls. It was supported by four posts, each, each set securely in its own bronze base. The top of the posts were overlaid with silver, and the hooks and the rings were also made of silver. All the tent pegs used in the tabernacle and courtyard were made of bronze. Inventory of materials. This is the inventory of the materials used in the building of the Tabernacle of the Covenant. The Levites compiled the figures as Moses directed, and Ithamar, son of Aaron, the priest, served as recorder. Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He was assisted by Oliab, son of Ahish Amak, of the tribe of Dan, a craftsman expert at engraving, designing, and embroidery with blue, purple, and scarlet thread on fine linen cloth. The people brought several special offering of gold totaling 2,193 pounds as measured by the weight of this sanctuary shekel. This gold was used throughout the tabernacle. The whole community of Israel gave 7,545 pounds of silver as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. This silver came from the tax collected from each man registered in the census. The tax is one Becca, which is half a shekel, based on the sanctuary shekel. This tax was collected from 603,550 men who had reached their 20th birthday. The hundred bases for the frames of the sanctuary walls and for the posts supported the inner curtain required 7,500 pounds of silver, about 75 pounds for each base. The remaining 45 pounds of silver was used to make the hooks and rings and to overlay the tops of the posts. The people also brought a special offering of 5,310 pounds of bronze, which was used for casting the bases for the posts at the entrance to the tabernacle and for the bronze altar with its bronze grating and all the altar utensils. Bronze was also used to make the bases for the posts that supported the curtains around the courtyard. The bases for the curtain at the entrance of the courtyard and all the ten pegs for the tabernacle and the courtyard. Leviticus 26. Blessings for obedience. Do not make idols or set up carved images or sacred pillars or sculptures sewned sculptured stones in your land so you may worship them. I am the Lord your God. You must keep my Sabbath days of rest and show reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey, obey my commands, I will send you the seasonal rains. The land will then yield its crops and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Your threshing season will overlap with the grape harvest and your grape harvest will overlap with the season of planting grain. You will eat your fill and live securely in your own land. I will give you peace in the land and you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. I will rid the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. In fact, you will chase down your enemies and slaughter them with your own swords. With your swords. Five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase 10,000. All your enemies will fall beneath your sword. I will look favorably upon you making you fertile and multiplying your people, and I will fulfill my covenant with you. You will have such a surplus of crops that you will need to clear out the old grain to make room for the new harvest. I will live among you, and I will not despise you. I will walk among you. I will be your God, and you will be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, so you will no longer be their slaves. I broke the yoke of slavery from your neck so you can walk with your heads held high. Punishments for Disobedience However, if you do not listen to me or obey all these commands, and if you break my covenant by rejecting my decrees, treating my regulations with contempt, and refusing to obey my commands, I will punish you. I will bring 
sudden terrors upon you, wasting disease and burning fevers that will cause your eyes to fail and your life to ebb away. You will plant your crops in vain because your enemies will eat them. I will turn against you and you will be defeated by your, your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you and you will run even when no one is chasing you. And if, in spite of all this, you still disobey me, I will punish you seven times over for your sins. I will break your proud spirit by making the skies as unyielding as iron and the earth as hard as bronze. All your work will be for nothing, for your land will yield no crops and your trees will bear no fruit. If even then you remain hostile towards me and refuse to obey me, I will inflict disaster on you seven times over for your sins. I will send wild animals that will rob you of your children and destroy your livestock. Your numbers will dwindle and your roads will be deserted. And if you fail to learn the lesson and continue your hostility towards me, then I will myself, I myself will be hostile towards you. I will personally strike you with calamity seven times over for your sins. I will send armies against you to carry out the curse of the covenant you have broken. When you ruin, when you run to your towns for safety, I will send a plague to destroy you there, and you will be handed over to your enemies. I will destroy your food supply so that ten women will need only one oven to bake bread for their families. They will ration your food by weight, and though you will though you have food to eat, you will not be satisfied. If in spite of all this, you still refuse to listen and still remain hostile toward me, then I will give you give full vent to my hostility. I myself will punish you seven times over for your sins. Then you will eat the flesh of your own sons and daughters. I will destroy your pagan shrines and knock down your places of worship. I will leave your lifeless corpses piled on top of your lifeless idols, and I will despise you. I will make your cities desolate and destroy your places of pagan worship. I will take no pleasure in your offerings. That should be a pleasing aroma to me. Yes, I myself will devastate your land, and your enemies who come to occupy it will be appalled at what they see. I will scatter you among the nations and bring out my sword against you. Your land will become desolate, and your cities will lie in, ruin, in ruins. Then, at last, the land will enjoy its neglected Sabbath years as it lies desolate while you are in exile in the land of your enemies. Then the land will finally rest and enjoy its the Sabbath it's missed. As long as the land lies in ruins, it will enjoy the rest you never allowed it to take every seventh year while you lived. And for those of you who survive, I will demoralize you in the land of your enemies. You will live in such fear that the sound of a leaf driven by the wind will send you fleeing. You will run as though fleeing from a sword, and you will fall even when no one pursues you. Though no one is chasing you, you will stumble over each other as though fleeing from a sword. You will have no power to stand up against your enemies. You will die among the foreign nations and be devoured in the land of your enemies. Those of you who survive will waste away in your enemies' lands because of the sins and the sins of your ancestors. But at last, my people will confess their sins and the sins of their ancestors for betraying me and being hostile towards me. When I have turned their hostility back on them and brought them to the land of their enemies, then at last their stubborn hearts will be humbled and they will pay for their sins. Then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham. And I will remember the land for the land must be abandoned to enjoy its years of Sabbath rest as it lies deserted. At last, the people will pay for their sins for they have continually rejected my regulations and despised my decrees. But despite all this, I will not utterly reject or despise them while they are in exile in the land of their enemies. I will not cancel my covenant with them by wiping them out for I am the Lord their God. For their sakes, I will remember my ancient covenant with their ancestors, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of all nations, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the decrees, regulations, and instructions that the Lord gave through Moses on Mount Sinai as evidence of the relationship between himself and the Israelites. Psalm 82, a Psalm of Asaph. God presides over heaven's courts. He pronounces judgment on the heavenly beings. How long will you hand down unjust decisions by favoring the wicked? Give justice to the poor and the orphan. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. Rescue the poor and helpless. Deliver them from the grasp of evil people. But these oppressors know nothing. They are so ignorant. They wander around in, dark, about in darkness while the whole world is shaken to the core. I say, you are God's. You are all children of the Most High. 
but you will die like mere mortals and fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God, and judge the earth, for all the nations belong to you. Now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Dear Lord, direct our paths this day through your Holy Spirit. Your daughter, your servant, is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.